St Mary's have been great to me. They have really brought the expertise of every different division we have in our school uh, to help me achieve my goal. With St Mary's University, anything is possible. So my name is John Patterson and I'm the Programme Director for Sports Science undergraduate degree. And I also uh, teach on the Master's Programme for Applied Sport and Exercise Physiology. Sports science, if I was to describe it, is really the study of human body during exercise and how we use scientific application to underpin sporting performance really. So we've arrived at the altitude chamber and this is going to be my first session at altitude. So I've never been above 2,000 metres, so this will be interesting. Fingers crossed I don't pass out. So what we're doing with Phil is we are going to look at a couple of aspects of his challenge. So we're going to look at what happens at sea level physiologically. So we're looking at oxygen uptake, as we've said, that's one of the challenges of, of going to altitude. And then we're going to take him up to close to the summit of Mount Elbrus and look at those responses at 5,000 metres, basically, and see how they change. So how much does that increase the physiological stress on Phil as he's hiking up the last phase of his ascent. So the sea level trial that we did, um, we basically just replicated what we were going to do at altitude. So we set up the treadmill at 25% gradient. Um, we set the speed at two and a half kilometers an hour, which might seem very slow, but at that gradient, that's, that's quite difficult. We then uh, fitted a heart rate monitor to fill. Um, we measured him up for his face mask, so we were going to um, collect uh, gas exchange uh, during the, the little walk on the treadmill. We also fitted a pulse oximeter to his finger so we could measure the oxygen saturation in his blood. We've gone walking for 10 minutes. Basically, during that process, we were interested in looking at uh, oxygen uptake, so submaximal VO2, his uh, SpO2, which is the oxygen concentration in his blood, heart rate. Uh, minute ventilation, so how much is he breathing, how fast. One of the things that we expect to happen when he goes to altitude is to start hyperventilating, so his breathing rate increases. Uh, so we did that for about 10 minutes just to kind of get some steady state exercise. Then for the altitude session, we essentially recreated the same scenario. The only difference is we slowed the treadmill down a little bit, so we were walking at two kilometers an hour. Um, we, were, we set the altitude at 5,000 meters and uh, eight degrees to try and make it a bit colder and make it feel like it was more on a mountain top. And went through the same process, got him walking for 10 to 15 minutes at that altitude. Um, and we, again, we were looking to see how Phil responded. So physiologically and physically, how much more stress did he, f did he feel? You know, could he notice the difficulty in breathing? Um, did it affect maybe his you know, feeling dizziness or short breath, uh, lightheaded, those types of things? Um, so again, we examined uh, the VO2 value, which was a little bit lower. We'd expect it to be somewhere between 20 and 25% lower than at sea level. We also looked at his SpO2, which again was quite a lot lower than sea level. So at sea level, I think it was about 98% saturation. When we did the trial at 5,000 meters, it was averaging around 72%, somewhere around there, fluctuating around there, which is that's quite a big difference. So. I think Phil initially felt a little bit lightheaded. He could definitely notice the, the change in reduced oxygen in the air. So being at 5,300 meters, somewhere around now, 5,000 meters, it's equivalent to 11% oxygen in the air. When we consider at sea level, it's 21% roughly. So almost half the oxygen availability. So yeah, to start with, Phil felt a little bit lightheaded maybe a little bit dizzy, you could definitely notice the change in breathing, shortness of breath. But once he got going, and then he you know, got used to that and overcome that and was quite fine. But obviously, you know, what we did today was a, was a very small amount compared to what he's going to face when he actually climbs Mount Alvarez. Yeah, that was an experience. I'm quite happy I didn't pass out, but definitely at the beginning, when you're just sort of standing there, then when you start walking, you can really feel the lack of oxygen. You start to feel quite dizzy. But after about five minutes, I really felt I adapted to it. So I think that's really quite encouraging. So let's do more of this. I have no doubt Phil will be successful, but you know, you can never tell. Not everyone reacts the same to altitude. 
So we might think that he's going to do great, and he, you know, he might really struggle on it. it just, it's one of those things we just can't predict. Um, I would say he might have a slight advantage, and he's not aerobically that fit. He's sort of recreationally trained from an aerobic point of view, um, and that seems to be quite beneficial for those going to altitude um, rather than being actually more aerobically fit.